So one thing that's missing here, if we return to play mode, is that if we touch our blob, we kind of do some weird hover action here, um, and we can kind of get sort of weird clipping behavior with the bat, but obviously they are not able to kill the, kill the player, right, or reset the player. And so we want to be able to do that, and we want to be able to add it easily, right? This is where the nested prefab workflow really comes in handy, right? Instead of having to go and edit each of these prefabs individually, because we created our enemy template base prefab, which contains the functionality for all of our enemies, and in this case, it's going to be the same, we can just open up this prefab, choose add component. I've already got it in the search here, reset player on collision, and just add that, it gets auto-saved. And now if we go and we look at, for example, the variant of enemy waypoints bat, we can see that that nested prefab has been updated. And so this is where it starts to get really super powerful. And now if we go in, we can see that the slime will reset the player and the uh, and the bat will reset the player as well. We did not have to actually edit those prefabs directly at all. We just said every enemy should have this behavior. We've already created this template-based prefab, and so now that behavior just works, which is, let's say we had made 10 of these level chunks and then realized, oh shoot, now I have to go back and edit every single enemy, right? This really, really makes this a lot easier. So that is pretty cool. So now, Right now, we're kind of just using these variants as another form of nested prefab, right? So let's look at what else we can do with variants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variant of a variant. We're going to create a fast bat. So I'm going to choose create prefab variant on my bat variant, and I'm going to call it bat fast. And I'm going to go in, double click it to open it. And then on my enemy template base, I'm going to go ahead and change the move speed. Now, you see, this becomes highlighted in blue. What this means is that in this variant, this is different or overridden from the base prefab. So if we look, again, we can see in the base, in the bat, this, the move speed is 1. And in this case, in the variant, the move speed is 2. And so we can go ahead and let's say we want to, we can also right click on the property. So we could apply this as an override to the original bat. We could actually apply it all the way to the base prefab so that all enemy waypoints would gain speed uh, or to the uh, enemy template base, right? So. We can choose where, if anywhere, we want that change to apply. In this case, we're going to keep it as a local change to the variant. And so then we're also going to go ahead, let's just for fun, let's make a change to the bat art. And let's go ahead and make it sort of orange. And so here I'm just tinting the sprite renderer. Again, that appears as an overridden change, right? And let's say if I wanted to get rid of that, I could just go ahead and say, ah, under the bat art sprite renderer, I could either revert all the changes, I could just revert this one change. I'm not going to do it because we'll keep it orange. It's, it's kind of a nice color. Uh, but now we have this variant. Let's go back out. Let's open level one start and let's add the fast bat to our scene. Let's add it here. Now, Let's say we want to make a change to the bat. Uh, what I want to show you is how the linkage persists. Even though this is now different in some ways, in this case, the speed and the color, it's still connected to the prefabs that it, that it derives from, right? Or that it's a variant of, the base prefabs. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and open this up, and I'm going to adjust the waypoints. Let's go ahead and instead of having this move, let's make it a little less. Instead of having this move horizontally, we're going to have it move vertically. So I'm going to set, I'm going to zero out the x-axis. This will be negative one. It'll move up and down between 
well, let's maybe we'll make this a little lower. Put it there. So now we have an additional override, right? We can see in this instance of the variant, we've overridden the transform of the two waypoints. Okay, so we can see we've got our faster orange bat, right? And we've got our slime and we've got our slower pink bat, right? So everything is working as intended. Now, let's say we're like, actually, you know what? Maybe all our bats should be vertical instead of horizontal. What we can do is we can go to our fast bat we can go to the overrides and we could say, actually, what we wanna do is we wanna apply Let's see, where are we gonna do it? We're gonna go here, the transform. We're gonna apply this change all the way to the, to all bats, to the enemy waypoints bat prefab. And what we'll see when we do that is that waypoint one for the pink bat is adjusted, right? So we're gonna go ahead and apply both of those changes. And so now our the linkage, this is a way to illustrate that the linkage between these prefabs, even though there are differences, is still maintained, right? And this is kind of the power of variance, is we can make changes, but we can also uh, apply changes back up to the base prefab if we find something that we like as we're working on the variant, right? So now, if we enter play mode, we can see that we have our fast Oh, let's see if I can get past this guy. He's a little too fast for me. Whoop, whoop. We have our fast vertical bat and our slow vertical bat uh, along with our slime, right? So everything is working pretty nicely. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the power of these workflows for, in this context, 2D level design, right? But in terms of designing enemies, in, in terms of designing complex hierarchies of different types of objects uh, with nested relationships and almost sort of inheritance style relationships, right? For those of you familiar with object-oriented programming, this concept of inheritance is, is sort of related. It's obviously not exactly the same, but, but there are some commonalities. And if you're used to thinking that way, you may find uh, this a, a friendly metaphor. And so I encourage you to grab the preview build, give it a try. It's still very much under construction. So there, there are still some bugs and so on. And if you can submit bugs for us, that will help us to uh, ship a higher quality product. And we hope to have this out in 2018.3. And so can't wait to see what you make with it. Thanks.